New Yorker's got an interesting article, The Historical Precedence of the Current Uprising in Sudan. In October 1964, Abdullahi Ibrahim, a student, uh, a member of the University of Khartoum Student Union, was taking notes for a symposium held in protest of the military dictatorship when he became an inadvertent chronicler of a defining moment in Sudan's post-independence history. Police sent in to break up the symposium shot Ahmad al Qureshi, another student activist, in the head. The next day, tens of thousands of people turned out for Qureshi's funeral procession, fueling an uprising that coalesced around students and professional unions. A general strike paralyzed the country a few days later in what is popularly known as Sudan's October Revolution. The government was toppled within a month. These guys have been in government for 30 years and never faced a threat like this, not even from the rebels in the mountains of Darfur. Current protests are now in their eighth week. The regime appears prepared to ride out the people's revolutionary urge. It has taken measures to coup, uh, to coup proof itself by, among other things, keeping common soldiers who might sympathize with the people spread out in the rural areas and reserving mostly special security forces to suppress political opposition in the capital. And then talking about uh, big parties lost power slowly, a political vacuum emerged, Corruption funded by oil wealth wasn't just intrinsic, it was a way of doing this kind of politics. This was during the oil boom, late 90s and the 2000s. Unspoken contract between the government and the upper classes, government would be left alone in exchange for maintaining high subsidies for oil and bread and protection from violence. This is not a livable situation anymore, I'll need said. We are more scared of law enforcement bodies than criminals. And this is an interesting point. A younger, increasingly multicultural population, including people displaced internally because of the wars, has fractured the regime's project of imposing an Islamist identity on the country. At the same time, the involvement of Darfuri students in the current protests has challenged the regime's propaganda and established a sense of unity in the capital. Even with fear, El Tayeb said, the people have decided that the government has to go. And then I went to the article I wrote on the 21st of Jan, when I spoke about this revolutionary song we sing in our prison as you tremble in your castle. And I concluded by saying Bashir is a political Harry Houdini, otherwise he would not have lasted more than three decades but it's clear these are the last days or end times.